All right, welcome back. Today we're gonna to take a look at Photo Mechanic 6, which is made by Camera Bits. Now I use Photo Mechanic 6. They do have one in which it does a cataloging process. I'm not a fan of cataloging because I constantly am moving my files from one folder to another. And in cataloging, you really can't change the path of your images or kind of screws everything up. So today I'm gonna to show you everything that I know about Photo Mechanic 6. Now, some stuff I'm just gonna skim over, and the reason I skim over is because I don't really think it's that important. When I focus on something, you'll hear me talk about it a lot as something that I find more valuable inside of the program. So, this is what the program looks like. Yep, nothing open. It's pretty boring at this point. Now, the first thing that we need to do is really boring. We need to go into the preferences and set some stuff up. Most stuff I have is default, but there are some key elements that I do like to change. So let's see what I like to change. So we're gonna go to Photo Mechanic and go into Settings. And hey, look, if you wanna spend more time researching and finding out what these different settings are, feel free to do that. Launching, let's switch. We want to go to general, so let's start here. What do I want it to do when it opens up? I want it to open up an MP contact sheet, which we see here. There are other options. If you want to choose those, feel free. Now this one is important. Show ingest dialog. So show ingest dialog. And what this means is, when you stick that memory card in your camera, do you want the ingest dialog box to automatically pop up? And the answer for me is absolutely yes. Do I want it to pop up on Lightroom? No. On Bridge? No. In Photo Mechanic? Yes. Down here we have color classes, and we're gonna learn a process called culling, and in that culling process, we'll find out more what these colors mean. Now, you can change what these colors say so if you wanted to put change this to purple and say my first great photo you can change all of this information but this is just some basic identifiers right here feel free once you get used to it if you don't like these colors you can easily go through and change them all right down here nobody uses a disk burning feature so we're going to go ahead and skip that let's go to the next thing which is the contact sheet now look if you do want to Screenshot any of this stuff, feel free. So I sort by file name, but if you wanted to sort by date, feel free to change that stuff out. Most of these colors here are for just how the screen looks and nothing else. So right here, I use the lower extension. So if you wanted to change it to uppercase, you could feel free to do that, but I don't have any of that stuff going. If you don't like the sound when you move the images to the trash, you can get rid of that and just uncheck that out. Now, right here, my default resolution to use is 300 pixels per inch because just about everything that I print uses 300 pixels per inch. It makes it so I don't have to go in and change anything ever, even when I'm in Photoshop. So that's what I have set up. This stuff I don't use, so let's go ahead and move on. Launching, all right? What program do you wanna send the file to? Now, most of my files are raw files. So even though I have Adobe Photoshop 2024, which is the newest version, it is going to go into Adobe Camera Raw instead. If you wanted to go into Lightroom or another program, you would just select that program. But when you put Photoshop, if it's a raw file, it will automatically open the Adobe Camera Raw first and then go into Photoshop after you tell it to do so. If you wanna have a default application to edit movies in, uh, you could fill that out here. I don't use Photo Mechanic as a browser for video editing, so we'll just kind of skip over that, but you could easily add it. This one's important. When in RAW and JPEG mode, which photo do you want it to edit? In my case, I want it to edit that RAW photo. So some people on their cameras might have the camera save as both a RAW and a JPEG, and it wouldn't know which one to edit. So in my case, yes, I wanted to always edit that RAW photo. So right here we have a Photoshop droplets location. I actually use actions, not droplets, but if you do use droplets, you could easily locate where they're located at. All right, the next thing that we have here is basically our metadata fields. So for JPEG, TIFF, PSD, and GNG photos, 
add embedded IPTC and XMP. People hate XMP. If you don't know what XMP is, I have a whole video just on XMP. It's a wonderful thing, but people freak out about it. I don't know why. But that information for TIFF-based RAWs, you have this information, you can select all this stuff. So we're just gonna stick with this. Down here, we just have some more basic information, ones like a font. One thing that I think is important is check spelling of caption field as you type. So if that's helpful, you might wanna go ahead and click that. After check spelling down here, we have this, always use the date. I use a variable there, so we'll see what that, that means, but you could click this, that would make a lot of sense. All right, cache. So first of all, the location, my disk cache is gonna be on my internal hard drive so far. If you do not have a large hard drive, feel free to move it to an external drive. What cache does though, is it stores frequently used information. So if I have a thousand images, and it has to render the preview for all thousand of those photos, it can store that information. So the next time that I open up the file or the contact sheet, it doesn't have to re-render everything. So it's saving time of tasks that it does over and over and over again. So in this case, we're controlling that information. I can control the cache size, how long it's there, when it purges those. So meaning like if I downloaded a thousand images of a chicken, and then after 30 days, it would automatically remove them because basically I'm probably not gonna be using them after 30 days. Now look, I can reopen the contact sheet. It's not gonna get rid of the photos, it just has to re-render all those previews and do it over again. So this is caching, it's actually very important and feel free to change or do anything that you want. So the next thing that we have here is the render cache. And I was kind of just talking about this, but what this is referring to is a digital negative. So you do have the ability to take one raw file and convert it to a DNG. And so do you want to use or enable raw rendering on a DNG file? That's what this is talking about. I don't use DNG files or convert to them. So we're going to skip it. Color management. So this is the first step in color management. Yes. I use color management. My monitor calibrated. Everything is set to Adobe 1998 as I go through. There's a whole bunch of different profiles, but in my case, I use Adobe 1998. So color manage thumbnails and color manage previews for display. Embed ICC profile into the camera's JPEGs during the copy or ingest. I don't shoot JPEGs, but this is a good thing. If you do shoot JPEGs, you do want to embed that profile. GPS, don't use it. Um, I'm not going to put GPS stuff on my photos. Accessibility issues here. So anything that you want to ch change for that, you can change this stuff. I just leave it as is. Right down here, the interface, we are in light mode. There's dark mode. You could do whatever mode that you wanted to use. So those are your preferences and settings. Look, do you need to change everything? No, but there are some specific items that are going to be beneficial when using the program. So if you have any questions on that type of stuff, feel free to leave me comments. If I didn't fully explain something and you want more information on that subject. Enough of the boring. Let's get some photos in the first step in the process of what we're going to be doing is the ingest process. And just means we're gonna be taking our photos and we're gonna be adding information to it as we import them. So you will see here. Normally you would just stick your card in and the ingest window dialog box would pop up. In this case, I already have the card in, so I'm just gonna hit Command G, which is the quick key, and we'll slide it right over here. And I will probably need to zoom in so everybody can see what I'm doing. And yeah, it's got a whole bunch of information that you probably don't know what it is. And then right down here, we have all these cool things. And those are called variables and they like autofill things in for me. So yeah, I don't have to spend that too much time or effort in doing it. All right, so what's the process? The first thing we need to do is we need to click on the drive or source that we want to ingest or import. And that is gonna be my EOS SD card that I have right here. We also could import images that are already on a hard drive from folders that we see right here or a selection. In this case, in this process, 
I'm going to be showing you from the digital card to another hard drive. Next thing that we have down here is variables and variables let you add stuff in here. And so what this variable is doing is it's adding today's month, today's day and today's year. So it's automatically recognizing what today is and adding that information. So in this case, it would be September 19th, 2003. And that's what it would replace this with here. And then I have a dash and it's called the job name, which is down here. So let's go to job name. All right, so I've slid this down here. So this variables is next to this so you guys can see what's going on. And in this field here, we have two things. We have the client and the user. So I'm the user, here's my information. Yeah, usually I fill out all this information, but I don't want you to see some of it. So I've hidden it, all right? You can save those by clicking on this and saving anything that you want. And it would just save the user. You can also save clients. So in this case, you could have your client, their name, their address, all this information, and it would be added to the metadata, okay? And up here, we name each job. So in this case, I had taken pictures of my neighbor's dogs and I call them Mango. So I'm gonna type in Mango and that's gonna be the job. Now, this job name is what's gonna be introduced right here because that is the job name, job name up here. So what's gonna happen is it's gonna do the date dash Mango, just like that. Over here, notice I've got my initials and this is for a client that I use a lot and then I have the date, and then I have the job name after that. So to set any variable, it's really easy. It has variables here, and it has sequence variables here. Um, you'll notice right here, it's at 101, so I can click on this after I get rid of this. So I can hit set, and we'll move this over here. I can just hit reset, hit okay, and that will set it back to one. It's kind of annoying that you have to manually do that, but uh, I guess there are reasons where you might wanna ingest one card and then ingest another card. So you want to keep that sequence going. Variables. So here are variable fields that we have here. So anything that we see over here, we could click and add as a variable anywhere in this ingest dialog box. And there's a ton of stuff that you could use for variables. Now I'm going to have a whole section dedicated to just using variables. So don't overthink it right now if I'm not just kind of skimming over, I'm just telling you they're here. So we can scroll through any of this stuff. I, I just wanted to do day, just wanted to do zero. And the cool thing is when you click on it, it tells you how it's gonna look and what it's gonna do. So if it's a little bit confusing when you click on this and you don't know how it's gonna look, it's gonna show you up here as to what that variable actually does. So let's go ahead and click this out because we don't need to see that right now. And we need to go over here. So our destination folder, all right? So where are those images going? That guy right there, all right? So I've clicked that, I've located it. This is my path, volumes, and then this SSD. That's the path of the location. If you wanted to import images to two locations at the very same time, click this, pick the next path of the new location, and it will adjust the images at both the primary and the secondary location at the same time. I do use two locations, but I do a weird process, so I don't use that. Right here, copy locked and unlocked photos, copy raw and non-raw photos. You do have other options here if you wanna go ahead and take a look at that. So right now in here, I've got this tick. This is my rename. So when my files come in, they usually have this weird like X, Y, K, one, two, three, six, eight, four, nine, seven. That's not very helpful. So I am renaming all my files, okay? And what I have is my initials, the date, and the job name. Next, down here, what do we want it to do? We want it to open the contact sheet during ingest. This is important. Most other programs, as they're importing, you really can't work on them because they're kind of doing it. They can't do two things at once. Well, Photo Mechanic renders as it downloads, so you can start working as soon as the first image pops up. So that's why I've got open contact sheet during ingest. Down here, this is a great little function, unmount source disk after ingest. What this means is you've stuck your SD card in, and after you're done importing it, 
it automatically ejects so you can just safely pull out. You don't have to go in somewhere and click a little button that says eject. It's just safe to remove. So wonderful thing. All right, the last thing that we need to take a look at is the IPTC or the metadata. Let's go ahead and click on that. All right, so this is an IPTC metadata template and there's tons of information you will notice. Anytime I have information, there's a little tick box, all right? So if you're interested in SEO, one of the main things that you need to fill out for SEO is alt text. This field will auto import into the alt text field in any image, and that way Google can read it and find out what it is. When Photo Mechanic first came out, it was really geared toward photojournalism and editorial photography. So we used to use this little plugin with JPEGs called I am JPEG, and that's where we put our metadata information. And basically, once these IPTC fields came, we started filling this stuff out and they've integrated it into Photo Mechanic. And that's why you'll see just about any journalism or editorial photographer using this program. But now I don't do that anymore, but I still use the program because it's super helpful. Why? Because it helps fill out the SEO. It gives information that I can send to clients so I can fill out the description here in the caption and my client doesn't have to do it, and that makes them very happy. I can add keywords, I can add the description writer, I can add my copyright information, I can add my websites, I can add usage rights in any information that I want to. You'll notice right down here, I've got job name variable. Oh, wow, look at that. So I can add a variable in any of these fields to autofill them out. So job name would just go ahead, in this case, put Mango, and that would be the title name of that program. So today I've got this selected. It's auto gonna fill out today's date, Camp Hill, Pennsylvania, all location information. Look, there's more stuff underneath it. Some of it I don't want you to see, so I'm not gonna go ahead and save that. But what's really cool is once you filled this out or you can create custom ones for different things, you can save all these. So you can save it, you can load them, so if I was in one template and I wanted to go to another, I could hit load. So you can do all kinds of different things. You'll notice your variables are available down here. So you could just simply click that and the variables would pop back up and you could use those to fill information in, in these fields. So that is the IPTC template. I suggest that everybody who's a photographer fill this stuff out. It's wonderful. Can people go in and just delete everything when they steal your photos? Absolutely, they can. All right, the last thing that we're gonna do is hit ingest, and what's gonna happen, it's gonna move those photos over, add all that information, and then we're gonna start seeing the thumbnails up here in the image. These are just some random photos that I had taken of my neighbor's dog, so let's go ahead. Now, remember, the speed at which this works is gonna be relegated to the read-write speed on your card. This is an old SD card, uh, with 95 megabytes per second. So it's not my typical cards. I usually use much faster ones. So what you would see be seeing here would usually be loading at quite a bit faster. Right here under task, it tells you what it's doing. If it was doing multiple things, it would have multiple ingest tasks. So we'll go ahead and let this go through its process. Now, if I wanted to, I could basically start and come in here and click on this first image and I will just double click it so it shows up bigger. And I could just start going through and calling my process. All right, our ingest over here is complete. All our thumbnails are up here. And look, I've just used these because yeah, I don't need to have model releases for dogs or anything. It just makes it simple. So we have a bunch of photos that we can go through here and it will make a whole lot of sense. So what are we seeing? So everything that we need to see that's new here is first of all, we've got our thumbnails with some information below it. Up here, we've got two different ways to kind of view or navigate. We're gonna be using the cursor mode. I do not like that little zoom magnification code. Up here is our folder that we're working in. 
We can control our thumbnail size by sliding this and it will make our thumbnails larger or smaller. We're viewing our images by file name. So if you were to go up here, you would see it says GW, the date Mingo001.cr2. That's the renaming process that we told it to use, right? We could reverse that and we can see all of our images. So this is gonna be a filtering mechanism that we see up here. Down here, we can rotate our images, either left or right. We can click here. This will give us information about the photo. That will bring you into this new window in which it will let you edit and control and change the caption. One thing that you can do is you can save things. So you can click here and add mango if it's something that you use all the time. So one of the things I would do that for our city, so typical cities that I might use, I would click and save these. It just makes it so I don't have to type them over and over and over again. Really useful content. So if I wanted to come in here and write a caption for these dogs, obviously this caption is for something else. We could come in here and write that information. Over here, we can then navigate. So right here, if I wanted to save what I change it, I would click this and it would go to the next image. If I wrote something in here, then I could save it and go to the next image. This just lets you navigate through the images and then you can save and copy information. And down here, it's just showing you the font type that we use. That is the eye window. And this is kind of your loop view or seeing your preview that we see here. Now, up here on the top, we've got some new icons. Up here, we've got show previous, show the next photo, which I don't use. I use the keyboard for this. So we can add a photo to a selected set. We can subtract a photo. We can rotate here just like we could before. This would bring up that eye window that we just saw. We can edit the photo here. So this would throw that into Adobe Camera Raw. In this case, I'm just gonna hit done and go back to Photo Mechanic. It's not something that I would do. So let's go ahead and just open something up back here again. When you hold over that, you'll notice right here, there's a photo edit in a E in the brackets. That's the quick key. So command E is your, we can look at our histogram. I don't look at my histograms, but all histograms do is show you where the data is in your image. And since I'm not editing in photo mechanic, it's really not that um, important for me and highlights and shadow. So if you wanted to show out areas that might be over or underexposed or shadows that are too dense, you could click on that. It's something that I don't find useful because I'm not editing inside of this program. So that's what we got on the right hand side. So you can click and show anything that you want. This is just showing you some quick information over here. This little thing is just showing you that you're using that uh, color profile that we set, which was Adobe 1998. So what in the world am I using this program here for? So what I'm gonna be doing next is a process called culling. And let's go ahead and click on this. You'll notice up here, we've got little stars, which I don't use, but I do use the colors. Most other programs, one, two, three, four, would be like one star, two star, three star, four stars. And hey, if you love stars, use it. I don't, I use the colors. I always have. So if I hit one, it's gonna give me red. Two, it's gonna give me yellow. Three, it's gonna give me green and so on, okay? Culling is basically just going through these images because there's a lot and I did it on purpose to find out what images that I like, okay? Look, I took these photos, are all of them gonna be good? No. So I need to find out which ones I like and we can do that process by culling. So let's go ahead and start right here. I'll double click this image. Now, how do I do this? My right hand is on the keyboard on the arrow keys. I think this is just quicker and easier because when I tap right, I go to the next one. If I tap left, I go backwards, okay? My left hand is just basically gonna live on the keyboard. So if I hit the number one, you'll notice right down here, it changes color. If I hit two, it changes color. It changes color, zero, it removes the color. So I'm gonna go through, cause I don't really care what color things are and just tap one if I like the image. So we're going through these images. I like that image, I tap one. That image, I tap two. Going through, no, no, maybe, maybe. You can see I went backwards real quick. Those are a little bit out of focus. So we'll go through here, like that image. 
and we'll say that we like this image for some reason. And I will go through all my photos. Look, I'm not going to go through all the photos because it would take too long. And once I've gone through my images, I'm going to go ahead and clear this screen out. I can come up here and then filter them. And I can filter them by turning off everything that doesn't have a color. So this gray symbol that we see up here, if we click that, it gets rid of everything that doesn't have a color tag. So if I gave this one a two, it's going to show that unless I click on yellow to turn yellow off. It's letting me isolate just the images that I like. Usually at this point, I will kind of zoom in and maybe go through my images. I could compare my images or do anything that I want. But basically, all I'm trying to do is find the images that I like. And once the process of me selecting all the images is done, I can click on the photo that I want to edit. Maybe it's this one. I'm going to hit Command E and that's going to throw that into Adobe Camera Raw and I can start the process of editing or adjusting the image. So that is the process of culling. And truthfully, this is basically my workflow and what I do. I pick my images and now I'm going to go ahead and start adjusting them. In the next sections of Photo Mechanic, I'm going to go through some of these toolbars here and explain what they do, show you how you can find some of these quick keys and show you some of the more advanced functions that are available inside of the program.